On this episode of UTR, we're in the Great Lakes Bay region for a wild ride through Michigan's Everglades with Johnny Panther Quest. Then we hit Kakalan for a place where you can eat Thanksgiving dinner anytime you want. We'll also introduce you to a sweet new baker in Bay City and show you how Frankenmuth goes to the dogs every Memorial Day weekend. Get ready to explore the cool people, places, and things that make Michigan a great place to be. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by Downtown Bay City, mid-Michigan's beautiful riverfront downtown. Enjoy what's old and what's new at one-of-a-kind places to shop, dine, and be entertained. Or just sit along the riverfront, take a deep breath, and watch the boats go by. Info online at downtownbaycity.com. And by the Great Lakes Bay Region cities of Bay City, Birch Run, Chessening, Frankenmuth, Midland, and Saginaw. Reconnect with your family and friends, get recharged, and experience all the fun attractions and events that bring smiles to everyone's faces. For a free travel planner, call 1 800 444 9979 or online at visitgreatlakesbay.org. And by Covenant Healthcare. Covenant Healthcare is one of the largest, most comprehensive healthcare providers north of Metro Detroit. Covenant Healthcare offers convenience and easy access to high quality care throughout the Great Lakes Bay region. More info at covenanthealthcare.com. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar Michigan. If you're looking for a place to spend time in Michigan, it's time you looked at the Great Lakes Bay region. Because every time we come here, we have a great time. We've been to this part of Michigan a lot on UTR and for a lot of really good reasons. From the classic historic cities and their amazing architecture to the beautiful homes and neighborhoods surrounding them, this area truly has a sense of place that, well, just makes sense. And if you're in need of green space to help connect you back to planet Earth and make you feel whole again, you couldn't land your spaceship in a better spot. The Great Lakes Bay region is a pretty good sized area, so to make sure that we headed off in all the right directions, I spent some time with Lori Amo from the GLBR CBB. For people who aren't in the know like us, what makes up the Great Lakes Bay region? The Great Lakes Bay region is all of Bay County, Midland County, and Saginaw County. The six main communities are Bay City, Birch Run, Chessening, Frankenmuth, Midland, and Saginaw. Now we've already been to Midland, we've featured Bay City, Saginaw, Frankmuth, so we already know a lot about what's so special about okay. this region. But what do you think gives it its personality? I like it because there are a lot of small towns, yet you have a lot of agriculture as well. Now when we were in uh, Saginaw filming last, we did a little piece at a restaurant called Fralia's, which is wonderful. And uh, we ran into a lot of young professionals there who told us they've decided to stay and make their future in the Bay Region. Yes. Why do you think that is? Um, I think they're finding out about the diversity that we have here. We have a lot of different companies here. Um, with Dow Chemical and Dow Corning being over in Midland area, Saginaw is really becoming a hub for the medical community. Central Michigan University is building medical schools on both sides of the river right now. And so we will have medical students here in another year or so. Um, of course, over in Frankenmuth, we have Zenders and Bavarian Inn, and they are a very large employer as well. We also have a lot of events that go on. We have the culture and we have the fun. We have the sporting events, everything that young people like to participate in. Now, what I like, especially about Saginaw, because that's where we are right now, um, mm -hmm. is the green space you guys have here. Incredible amounts of green space. If you love the outdoors, um, not only can you walk along the river or go on it with your boat, you could take a trip on Johnny Panther Quest Adventure Trips. He will take you to the Everglades of Michigan which is in the Shiawassee National Wildlife Refuge. You're going to see all kinds of wildlife, uh, deer, beaver, eagles, a lot of eagles. It's worth all the money in the world. I highly recommend it. I think we will. Johnny Panther Quest. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? Well, it sounds cool because it is. 
Johnny Panther Quest Eco Tours take you on natural adventures throughout Michigan's wild water backcountry for an experience that will blow your natural mind. When he's not using his superhero name, Will Houghton is the wild water man who knows and loves every inch of these Everglades. I gotta ask you, Johnny Panther Quest is probably the coolest name I ever heard in my life. You either love it or hate it. It's after, <laughs> it's after an old hokey Ricardo Montalban B movie. He that played is. a Florida Everglades Indian running barefoot through the swamps among the poachers. So we used to go down to Florida in the winter, race the motorcycles to stay in shape. We would run through the swamps. So we called it Johnny Panther. How far is it to the Everglades? About 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, is that close? That's good. I gotta tell you, I never had any idea that there were Everglades in Michigan. We call it the Everglades of Michigan minus the poisonous snakes and alligators. And as you'll see, it's, it's pretty close. I was gonna ask you, are there any animals in here that are dangerous other than humans? Well, we think we saw a panther two years ago or a cougar out here. Perfect, Johnny Panther Quest! Exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, what's the best time to come out here? When you're breathing. The alternative's not so good. <laughs> Today's journey took us deep inside one of the most untouched habitats in Michigan, the Shiawassee National Wildlife Refuge. How do you know which way to go up here? I go whichever way I want. <laughs> I usually go up around the island. This is a confluence of the Titabawassee on the right and the Shiawassee River on the left. And when I was a little boy, the water coming in from the left was blue-green, and the water coming in the right never froze. Over the years, it's done a complete flip-flop. All the water coming in from the left comes from downstate, Flint, Fenton, Holly, Chesting. The water coming in from the right comes from up in northern Michigan, Wixom Lake, Sanford Lake. How big are the Michigan Everglades? 18,000 acres or 32 square miles. It's part of the largest watershed in the state of Michigan. It drains over 9,000 square miles. It's one of the few watersheds in the world that flow in a northerly direction. The Amazon and Nile are a couple of other ones. And they call it the Shiawassee Flats because there's only two feet of vertical drop from St. Charles to Saginaw Bay, which is roughly 32 miles. This isn't a three hour tour, is it? No. <laughs> I always have to check that when I go on a boat. I build them as <laughs> three to five hours, but yes, you are on the epic three hour tour. What kind of different tours do you do? I have uh, several different trips I, and very technical names. This tour we're on today is called the Wide Park. Then I also run a trip called the Narrow Park, which is primarily through the Shiawassee State Game Area. Yeah. Then I have a tour called the Marathon Trip, where we go all the way from St. Charles to Saginaw and back. Wow. I have a, what I call the Cheap Trip, down by east of Flint on the Flint River, which is really pretty in the fall. And then I have a tour called the Dam Trip, which runs in northern Michigan, just west of Oscoda on Cook Pond. And we go from dam to dam. And for the more adventurous, water skiing, tubing, dune climbing. Well, I heard you also have a, a corporate team building trips. You have um, romantic, I heard you have a mile in club, but I don't even want to ask you about that. You don't? No, I don't, a... I don't even want to know about that. All right, <laughs> well, you know, what... okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but I hear you, you've got romantic trips, you've got corporate trips, you've got, I mean, it sounds like you're extremely adaptable, like nature. It, it, it is, it's, what I do is I cater to each individual party I guide. Like I did a team building trip on Monday and I take, there's a very posh bed and breakfast in Saginaw where I can pick couples up out of their backyard, drive them into the sunset, bring them back under the stars. They crawl out of my boat right into their room. So when I bring people out, it's real casual. Um, it's almost like a mini Las Vegas. What happens in the boat stays in the boat. Right. But uh, basically I supply cooler ice and a bag of pistachios. People bring whatever they want to eat and drink. Cameras, binoculars, highly recommended. And we go out and rip and tear to their heart's content. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this, this is my 19th year doing it professionally, and I've been doing it my whole life for fun. The passion Will has for these natural wetlands is powerful, sincere, and intensely contagious. Not only did we get to tour and learn about an area most people don't even know about, we got to see at least a half a dozen bald eagles along the way. And for someone like me who's never seen one before, it's hard to describe how cool of an experience that was. The whole trip was filled with good humor, great conversation, and some pretty awesome stories. What's the most rewarding thing for you personally about doing this? When people shake my hand and thank me. I mean, this is my church or my playground. So when people say that I've, I've far exceeded their expectations, that they had no idea this place existed, or they're gonna go home and tell their friends, that's really rewarding. Um, I used to work for a photographer who shot the Red Wings. And one day we were wiring up the Yost Hockey Arena, the U of M barn, yep. and I came out from under the bleachers and this guy's yelling at me, Will, Will. And I go and I, I uh, 
I'm looking at him, he says, you don't, I've got goosebumps. He says, you don't remember me, do you? And I says, no, I don't. He says, I'm that kid you took out and showed all those eagles to when I was eight. Here he's going to college that and you and them. I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm, but it, it just, it's incredible. If you're looking to improve your quality of life, just let Will share some of his life with you. I guarantee when you're done, you'll wish you were Johnny Panther Quest. Imagine if you could have Thanksgiving dinner any day you wanted to. Well, stop imagining, because of the turkey roost, you totally can. And I'm totally gonna. Turkey, 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 turkey. Well, how was your turkey? Good? Wonderful. Oh, good. Strawberry oh. shortcake with five of us. Oh, <laughs> turkey, turkey, turkey. This little pink building in Cacallan, Michigan is a landmark for people who know what they love. And what they love is a great turkey dinner with all the trimmings whenever they want it. Todd Baller is the man who eats, thinks, sleeps, serves, and even talks turkey. As we drove up today, I couldn't miss the building. Was there a sale on pink paint or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the pink was when uh, their first owner was named Clayton Kitchen, of all names. His name was Kitchen? Kitchen, Kitchen. Okay. They called him Kitch. Um, they could never remember the name Turkey Roost when he started out, so they painted the building pink to get a little landmark. So he knew how to find his way to work? Exactly. <laughs> so so uh, the pink stayed with us. And this place has been, I mean, this place is a landmark, and it's been here since when? 1955. July of 55 it started. Whoa, and you worked here as a kid? Yeah, not in 1955. <laughs> no, I know that. I can, I can figure that one out. I, I came here in 1975, yeah, in high school at 14. I stayed here all the way through the high school years, and then I took a job in the shops. And then I always wanted to come back and buy it. Always had that in my heart. I love doing dishes. I love watching the cooking. You love doing dishes? Oh, absolutely. And my grandma you want always... to rent a room at my house? <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma always says, she says, the best part of me is when you can feed people. They're always happy. That's why we have our holidays and all that. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I got that same feeling. So I, I want to buy this someday. So what happened is I, I took every aspect of this shop uh, from the scheduling, from the ordering, from the traffic, the trucking, um, uh, orchestrating people, and that all paid off. And I come back and bought that uh, second owner out. Well, you serve the happiest meal of all. You serve Thanksgiving dinner, you know, 365 days a year. Every day, yes. Yeah. How many turkeys do you go through here? Last year we went through 37, a little over 3,734 uh, pound birds. Really? Yes. What do you think this place means to this entire region? You know, it's a landmark. We have a lot of return customers. We're at the third and fourth generation people coming back now, which is wonderful. You know, and we hear it a lot and we're happy over that. Uh, the other part of it is, is uh, we are the biggest employer in the township. So, which is a nice thing too, and uh, we want to keep going. I've been coming here for about 50 years. I was coming here when it had turkeys out here in the fence in a little cage. And I come here twice a day and about seven days a week. <laughs> I'm here every day. For 50 years? Yeah, just about. We love the people, the waitresses, the Todd himself. Um, the food is phenomenal. I've known Todd since he's about five years old. You still talk to him? <laughs> On occasions. I love this restaurant. I've been coming here since I was a little girl. Easter Sunday was our thing, all in our bonnets and everything. We came to the Turkey Roost every single Easter Sunday. I remember coming here with my grandparents when I was maybe five or six years old, so it's been quite a while. And then we moved up to the Call Collin area, and now we come here all the time. You ever get tired of turkey? No. <laughs> Not the way it's prepared here, you know. People talk about this place, they almost talk about you like your family. So you must be taking care of people. That's what I'm all about personally, and that's what we are about here. So it's no wonder why people love this place and this guy so much. But being the inquisitive, hard-driving correspondent that I am, I had to ask Todd one final and very important question. What do you eat on Thanksgiving? Our turkey plate. You still eat the turkey, turkey plate? plate? <laughs> I still eat our turkey plate, yes. Well, there you go. It's got to be good. <laughs> yes. We came real hungry, left real full, and with a real appreciation for what Todd and the turkey rooster are all about. Friends, family, and community. Oh, and a homemade turkey dinner anytime you want it. <laughs> Bonus. You know, some people say that baking is a science, and other people say it's more of an art form. Well, for the person you're about to meet, it's a little bit of both. If you like sweets, Bay City is the town to head for, and Sweet Sandy Bees is the new place to get them. This gourmet throwback bakery is turning heads, creating smiles, and making a big difference in this neighborhood. Sweet Sandy B is Sandy Berline, and she's making her dream come true one cupcake at a time. 
Sandy. Yes. Sweet Sandy B. Mm -hmm. Who's your lovely assistant? Oh, this is my daughter, Maya. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, what made you decide to get into the business of baking? Well, I've always loved baking. I really loved decorating cakes. And when I had her older brother, Owen, I started to make his birthday cakes. So that's kind of what sparked the love of doing that. And I felt I was ready. I was working in a very boring office job and I just wasn't motivated. And I really liked baking. So I quit my job, went to culinary school. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're classically trained in French pastry. I am, yep. I went to the French pastry school in Chicago. Well, I, I've heard that you're called the pastry ninja. That doesn't sound real French. <laughs> no, but it sounds pretty cool, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it works for me. Does this apron yeah. make my butt look big? <laughs> so, you do a lot of things with kids, don't you? I do, yeah. We actually do have some birthday parties here where we have kids that come in and decorate cupcakes and cookies, and uh, we found that they really love it, and it's a nice place for parents to bring them where we get to make the mess, and, right. and Mom, everyone get to else go, oh, gets to right. leave. And yeah, you get to exactly. clean up. And now you went away to school to study French pastry. What made you come back to Bay City and open a business here? Um, well, I thought that it was missing in Bay City. There really wasn't uh -huh. a bakery that was doing what I like to do, um, which is traditional home style type recipes, um, but using local ingredients. So I wanted to be able to showcase what I had learned in school, but also with recipes that were familiar to everybody, like chocolate chip cookies, um, pies, lemon bars, and I found that thus far, it's been really well received. Well, that's what I love about this place. It's retro, it's cool, it's funky, mm -hmm. and you and it's got personality. It's, Thank you. it's not It's not your grandma's bakery, it's like Sweet Sandy Bee's bakery. Exactly. Well, lovely. I wanted it to be, and I frequently do say this, that it's like what your mom makes, but better. Oh, don't, oh, don't you I know, yeah, okay. I know, I'll I know, it's a bold statement, right. but. Oh, good job. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, I'm not putting any decorations on there. Yeah, you need to get some decorations on there. The cupcake's not complete without it. So how do you give back to the community that has embraced you? Because I understand everybody just loves the fact that you're here. Well, one of the things that I really find important is to get involved in the community by offering different donations and getting involved with the different fundraising events. Yeah. Um, and that's something that's been really important to me from the very beginning. Um, the largest way that I do on a day-to-day -day basis is by purchasing local ingredients. And I think that it's very important in this economy and in our community to continue to buy from each other. Um, you know, a dollar spent at my shop isn't just, you know, a dollar for sweet Sandy Bees. It's, you know, a dollar that went into my neighbor's pocket who may work at the sugar mill. You know, we talked to so many people about buying local, but no one's quite said it like that. I love the way you said it, buy from each other. Exactly. And help out the people around you. And it just, yeah, I never heard it put quite like that, but I like it. Nice job. How am I doing? Am I doing I think okay? You're doing wonderful. I am. How about you try a chocolate one? Okay. When you combine Sandy's dedication to this community and her great creations, what's not to love? It's homemade, it's um, made with love. You can tell that what she does, she, she loves doing it. We like the variety, and, uh, you know, we like the happy environment. We like, we like the new business. We like the that it's uh, doing well, definitely. I just love the fact that I can go to some place and get some nice fresh baked goods and bring them home to my children. There's a lot of energy, you come in and you look at the place. Not to mention that her uh, sweets are phenomenal. The painting on the outside is pretty nice. It is nice. Sure is. You look familiar. What's happening right now in Bay City that people should know about? One thing that I know that people love Bay City for is the riverfront. And also that, you know, there is this kind of resurgence of people moving to downtown Bay City for businesses and to also live. And I think that's really cool. And I think that will help bring a lot of other young people back to the area. I am a chamber member and I find, I think weekly that I'm hearing about other businesses that are opening in this area, which is really exciting for all of us. You're what we need. We need new businesses, young people joining chambers who make Cupcakes. Well, not yeah. necessarily that part, but that's that's a bonus. That's nice. Yeah. It's young entrepreneurs like Sandy who are making a huge difference in the Great Lakes Bay region. And if her story wasn't sweet enough, she even made us our own personalized UTR cake. 
Is that you where the heart is? Yeah, that's right where Bay City is. Oh, here, I'm gonna put something where I am. Right. I live right here. Oh. oh. Whoops, I just <laughs> fell into Lake Erie. <laughs> so next time you and your sweet tooth happen through Bay City, stop by and see Sandy B. She's even sweeter in person than she is on TV. You know, usually in Frankenmuth, beer and chickens are man's best friends, but not this weekend. That's because this weekend, Frankenmuth's gone to the dogs. It's the annual Dog Bowl, and it's the nation's largest Olympic-style event for dogs. Every Memorial Day weekend, thousands of humans from across the globe bring their best friends to compete in almost every canine event imaginable. And if you're wondering who let the dogs out, it's Michael Zender. He's the man with the grand plan for man's best friend. Whose wonderfully crazy idea was this? This was a combination of a number of people's idea to create something truly special here in Frankenmuth. We wanted to offer an opportunity to our guests where their family, friends, their best canine friends could come and participate in something truly unique where we have over 20 different events for the dogs to participate in. Well, how many dogs compete in this? Last year we had over 3,000 dogs compete in the variety of events that we offer to the public. Well, it's only been seven years and it's become the largest in the United States. Yes, we were able to last year claim the largest uh, Olympic style event for dogs in the United States. And we had over 3,000 dogs compete. Well over 2,000 dogs came to cheer on their fellow canines. <laughs> what kind of competitions? We have everything from dock dogs diving competitions to disc dog competitions, agility, wiener dog races, silly pet tricks. We have a pet parade. There's also border collie sheep herding demonstrations. The list just goes on. You guys don't show preference to the German shepherds, do you? Because we're Frankenmuth? No, but I do have a Grosse Minsterländer, which is a German hunting dog. You're not going to put me on pooper scooper detail, are you? No, you're off the hook today. Okay. Maybe tomorrow. All right, well, since I got out of that, time to head out and meet some of our furry friends. And I'll tell you, if you like dogs, there are enough here to keep you busy for a week. So, are you enjoying the, uh... Oh. So, are you competing this year? In what event? You're doing the high jump? Yeah. Good luck. Do you like all the dogs? Yeah. Does this event make you want to be a doggy? No. What does it make you want to be? Nothing. Well, that's my job. <laughs> so, are you here as a spectator, or are you actually um, participating? You don't say. Oh, I got a kiss. <laughs> Two questions. What kind of dog is that? And is that the proper way to carry a dog? It is a green dragon. His name is Jeffrey. And he is an endangered species. Mm -hmm. and he's the only one left of his kind. Really? And I believe this is the proper way to carry Jeffrey. You haven't been into the beer, have you? No. Good. Just checking. Are you competing or are you just here to, you know, check out the other dogs? I know some French. She's not impressed. Nice lady, Hosen. Are you Hans and Franz? Anybody ever tell you you have beautiful eyes? Huh? Aw. There you go. Yeah. Did you guys uh, make your own costumes? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they sure did. Squirrel! That'll do, dog. That'll do. <laughs> I honestly don't know who had more fun at Dog Bowl, the people or the dogs. As for me, I never did find that squirrel. But hey, it's Frankenmuth. I found something even better. So if you're looking for a place where you can explore the Everglades, eat Thanksgiving dinner in July, give your sweet tooth a treat, and let your dog compete for the gold, take a long look at the Great Lakes Bay region. When it comes to quality of life, they've got a large quantity. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. Investing in people, places, and partnerships to transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. Also by Downtown Bay City, mid-Michigan's beautiful riverfront downtown. Enjoy what's old and what's new at one-of-a-kind places to shop, dine, and be entertained. Or just sit along the riverfront, take a deep breath, and watch the boats go by. Info online at downtownbaycity.com. And by the Great Lakes Bay Region cities of Bay City, Birch Run, Chessening, Frankenmuth, Midland, and Saginaw. Reconnect with your family and friends, get recharged, and experience all the fun attractions and events that bring smiles to everyone's faces. For a free travel planner, call 1-800-444-9979 or online at visitgreatlakesbay.org. 
and by Covenant Healthcare. Covenant Healthcare is one of the largest, most comprehensive healthcare providers north of Metro Detroit. Covenant Healthcare offers convenience and easy access to high quality care throughout the Great Lakes Bay region. More info at covenanthealthcare.com. Closed captioning provided by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound, available in store and online. Franchises are now available. Info at biggby.com. Thank you.